hello so continuing on this late code contest 169 um, pro the last problem uh, 1309 verbal arithmetic puzzle so the problem says given an equation represented by words on the left side and the result on the right side we need to check if the equation is solvable under a set of rules and so the rules are first every character is decoded as one digit between 0 and 9 uh, which means basically that it's mapped to one digit um, and every pair of different characters must map to different digits, which means that no two characters have the same digit mapping. And each word and results are decoded as one number without leading zeros, which means when decoding numbers, when decoding each word of the words and decoding each result, it should not give us a number with a leading zero. The last one is that the sum of the numbers on the left side, which means the sum of the numbers for the words, should be equal to the number that the result gets decoded at as and then we want to return true if using these rules we can solve the equation and false if we can't and so if we look at this one send more money here um, if we do this mapping where s will correspond to 9 e to 5 and all of this we would get send the word send gives us this number you can see here it's not a, it does it doesn't have leading zeros so it follows the rules there and more gives us this and the sum gives us this and money also is m basically which is 1 o which is 0 so we still have these correctly n which is 6 so this one is correct um, e which is um, 5 so this one is good a, uh, y which is 2 so this one is good so the equation is solvable so it's not true and a similar thing happens with the rest in terms of the constraint we have that we have at most five words and at least two words and the length of each of them is between one and seven and we have only uppercase english letters um, and the number of different characters used are at most ten and that's like very good because otherwise we we won't have a number to assign and we'd have to assign two letters to the same number which uh, contradicts the rules so this um, here guarantees to us that it doesn't um, okay so now let's see how we can solve this um, okay so let's see how we can solve this problem so I think the first thing we have to just get familiar with is what the problem is asking so in the first example that we had uh, it was the words were um, send and more and the result word was money right um, so this was results and so what the problem actually means is that we add send to more like this and we want to do a mapping such that the sum gives us money like this and using the mapping that the mapping using this mapping here where basically um, s would be 9 um, e would be 5 and n would be 6 and D would be 7, M would be 1, O would be uh, 0, and R would be 8, and Y would be 2. So doing that, what will happen is that we will have here, send would be um, essentially 9, E would be 5, and uh, N would be 6, D would be uh, 7, and we do plus more m would be 1 o would be 0 r would be 8 and e would be 5 and this essentially will give us um, 2 5 6 0 1 right and this basically means since we already mapped m to 1 so that's valid still right so that's this O is mapped to 0, so that's good. N is mapped to 6, so still valid. E, we already mapped it to 5, so still valid. 2, which is Y, we can, well, we haven't mapped Y yet, so we can just map it 
And so we say true because there is no contradiction between the mappings, right? But a different way you can like formulate this problem, just a slightly different thing, is that you could say, okay, it's just send. Uh, I just want to find a mapping such that send plus more minus money. Uh, I should put M in front. So minus money. This should get me zeros, right? Because that's literally the same thing, right? A plus B equal to C, which means that A plus B minus C should be equal to zero, right? So instead of doing this, because we want we want to find a mapping that is consistent between all three. So we could just find something that gives us zero like this here, and we would be solving the problem that way, right? And one thing you can notice here is that there is no way for us to tell the mapping, right? There is, uh, yeah, you can think of uh, some kind of heuristic or something that we can, that we can come up with the mapping. And so, when you have a situation like that, we need to think about exhaustive search or backtracking, right? And so that's what we will be using to solve this problem. And since maybe because there are a lot of possibilities, we may be prune a little bit using some of the rules that we have. Uh, one hand rule that we will can use is that the pr that it's easy to forget um, because it's kind of just one of the rules. It's that we shouldn't have any leading zero. No word or no no result should have leading zeros. Which means basically that you can't have you can't map m here to zero and have. 0, 0, 8, 5, right? Because you will have these leading zeros. Or let's say you map O to maybe 2 and M to 0, and then you'll end up with a leading zero. This, we shouldn't do that. So that's one of the constraints for the mapping. And so what we can do here now is every time, let's just make sure we have a zero. We can have a zero and have a carry. Let's say, for example, the difference is 10 and have a carry. That's fine because maybe we can still have zero with the results afterwards, right? And so what this means is that if we, um, so since we are using exhaustive search, we need to find the state of our function, okay? Let's call it search here. Right? What would be the state of that function? So one thing you can notice here is that, well, we could just make these, uh, consider these columns, right? Each position, because that's where we want to end up with a zero, right? So just consider these columns, right? And then consider this here, each word, and the result consider these rows, right? So that way, at each position, we can say, okay, now we will need to add because it's a plus, and so we add the number. And then for the result, it should be minus, so we subtract the number. And if it's the last row, we need to check if it's zero, because if it's not zero, that's not a solution. We need to exit, right? So what this tells us is that our search state should be row and column, right? and something else maybe. So what is that something else? So at each position here, when we are here, we need to know the sum we have so far, so that when we subtract, we can check if it's equal to zero. So let's just call that balance here, because we want it to be at the end zero for each column, right? So we want balance uh, to be zero for each column, right? Okay, and so another thing is that if we are in the last, what are the our exit um, from this exhaustive search? When do we know that we are done, right? When do we know that we have a solution, right? So, um, when do we have a solution? And when do we exit, right? Maybe we don't have a solution, but we should ex we should exit, right? These are all questions that we should ask during when we are implementing something like this, backtracking or exhaustive search. And so here, what we s one thing is, well, if, if the current column is bigger than the number of columns, right, 
that means we already processed all columns for the current row then at that point we can just return whether the current balance is equal to zero right because once we finish the processing this column here we want to know if this is zero because if it's not zero that means this is not a solution and we should exit and so we return immediately and we we'll return immediately and check if the balance is zero that means it's a solution another state is when we are at the last row here when we are at the last row um, maybe for this one here sorry um, here I meant columns so it's actually because we are going from the left we are going in this direction it's actually for this last one here and when we are here and in the last column that means we are done right so we need to check a zero for the last one because that's the the end now when we are in the last row so we are right here this is the last row what should we do so when we are in the last row which means equal to rows so I, i'm just not uh, just one thing to notice here to note here is that um column columns is like the number the length of the lo of the longest word and rows is the number number of words plus one why plus one because I'm I'm adding the result as a as a row right Be except it has minus in front of it and here when I say the longest word including result right because that's also one of the rows and so here if I'm at the last row um, I should check right so if I'm at the last row I should check this here so I should check if the modulo of the balance so I don't care about carry I can have a carry I will check it later for the next column right but I'm interested in that the modulo of the carry should not be more than zero because if it's more than zero I might have two here and at that point I will no longer have zero as the final result and so that's not a solution so I need to make sure that <coughs> the balance modulo 10 is equal to zero and then once I do that for the last row um, I can switch to the next column right and so I switch to the next column like this and uh, search for um, column plus one and the next row for the since I'm done with this column I'm going to the next the first row right because I want to start from this here and so it's row zero and what's the balance It's whatever is the carry right so balance divided by 10 this will give me the carry so these are when when I have a solution and then when I'm the transition to another row right this is the part where I can exit if I you know with that I won't have any solution right <coughs> um, so this is the first part of the code now after that I need to transition to the next row if I'm done with the column but it's not the last row right so if it's not the last row and I just finish it this um, I think I need to write this again here so if I'm not at the last row let's say let's do this again so send plus more minus money so it should be zero um, so if I'm at the last um, so here I have my columns and then I have my rows so if I'm at the last column of the let's say this word here if I'm the, at the last column since I'm I'm going this way so if I'm at the last column which means basically that I'm at this position here what should happen I should go to the next word right so when at the last column of a row go to next row right 
uh, add to the column zero, right? So go to the next row to column zero. So that's what I'm going to do here. So first I will just take the, the word at this row, right? So it's just words row since I already handled the last row result so I know this is must be one of the words I can check if I'm at the last column so to do that I just check that my column is the last column and I check that that by making sure that it's bigger or equal to the length of if actually just equal to the length of words that would be enough uh, sorry the length of the current word now if it is I need to go to the next row so I need to search in the next uh, row and I need to pass down the the current the balance that we still have right Um, so here I'm going to the next row. Um, <coughs> uh, sorry, I mentioned here that it should be column zero. That's not true. It should be the same column because we are processing column by column. And so when I'm done with this one, M here, I should go to this O because I want to subtract it so I can see if it's zero, right? And so that's why I search in the next row at position column and I still have the balance. And since this is not the last row, I don't need to check if it's zero yet. I will check if it's zero only at the last row. Because the last row, that's where I subtract the results, right? Okay, so now um, at the now that I did the transitions um, for the cases where I'm at the boundaries, so for the cases when I'm at the last column, when I'm at the last row, and when I'm at the last column for, for one of the rows, right? So, So now what I need to do is um, now what I need to do is um, continue f do it for the for these cases. So for example, when I'm at this R, I haven't specified that yet. So something in the middle that isn't one of the boundaries. So for that one, I would need to check if uh, if R here already has a mapping then I can just use that because it, say for example I'm at this E here right so this E here it already has a mapping defined in this E so I should just use that because the same letter should always map to one unique digit but if I'm at a new letter like this case in R then I need to try a new mapping for R and try multiple different digits to see which which one works right so so for a letter, basically, what this means is that for a letter, in 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 a word or result that is not in the boundary, there are a lot of details in this problem. But uh, just keep going, keep repeating if if you don't understand a section. Um, so for a letter in a word or a result that is not in the boundary, we have two choices, right? So either there, there is already a mapping for that letter because we encountered it before or there isn't yet a mapping for it. There isn't yet a mapping Okay, so we have only one of these two cases. So if there is already a mapping for that letter, that means that I, I should just use it, right? So use it, right? Here, try all the remaining digits, the remaining and assign digit, digits, right? 
to find one that works. And if you exhaust all of them and we didn't find any one that works, well, we just exit and say this is not solvable. And this is what backtracking does to find one that works. And basically here we backtrack where, here is where we backtrack when we don't find a letter that works. If we don't find a digit, a digit mapping that works. And by works, I mean, um, and by works here, I mean that it yields us a zero here. That's what I mean, right? And so that's what we'll be doing here. So first we check if a digit has an assignment. And to do that, we check just, we need a map, right? So we need two maps for this. We need a map to identify what has been assigned and to what letters. And we need another map to identify um, if a letter is to identify if a digit has already been used. So I need two maps. Uh, I'm running out of space here, so I'm just going to put them here. You can, you can think that this would be at the start of the uh, function, but I would have two maps. One is or a map and maybe an array. So I would have letter to digit that has the mapping. So this one here has the mapping, the mapping of assigned digits and I need something to tell me for the second case here if a digit is remaining unassigned if a digit is unassigned because if it's assigned I don't want to use it and by using the map from letter to digit to digits I can't tell because the key is a letter and so I need something that tells me if a digit is already assigned or not so I would have just digit to letter that is just an array of none and so if a digit is not assigned, it would, be, uh, it would be none. And so if it's assigned, it would have a letter at the value position. And so here I have from 0 to 9 digits. So those are 10 digits, so multiplied by 10. And so here to know if a letter is assigned, already has a digit are assigned to it. So I need to check if <coughs> letter is in letter to digits. But there is another thing to remember is that I'm going from the right, right? I'm going here. So to find this position here, this is just n minus one, right? And this position here is just n minus two. And you get the idea. So in order to get the letter here, remember this is my current word. So to get it, I just take word and take the letter at position n minus column, right? Because that's what the columns represent it's this this is what column is and in Python this can be written in a handy way using just um, this this operator here and so now that I have the letter um, I can I can search um, so what is the column I should stay at the same column, right? Because I want to go to the next row, but stay at the same column. And go to the next row. But one thing that will change is what is the balance now? So if I'm going from here, it's plus. I need to add the value in letter to digit, right? If, I'm, if it's a minus, I need to subtract it. So I need to have the current balance plus um, the letter to digit value, right? Which is letter to digit for letter. Um, right? Just one thing though is how can I tell whether it's plus or minus? Well, it's minus if it's the last row and it's plus if it's the not the last row, right? And so to do that, I'm going to compute a sign, right? So I'm going to to compute the sign here, which would be minus one if it's the last row and one if it's not. So I say one if row is less than um, rows minus one, otherwise it's minus one because it's the last row. And so I could just multiply the sign here to add or to subtract from the balance, right? And that's pretty much, so this is the first portion and then I have the else for the second part. So this is the 
this portion here there is this portion and this this is the first portion there is just one thing that I written down here which is um, we don't want to have leading zeros right so there is a constraint in the problem that says I forgot where did we put it but the constraint in the problem in one of the rules is that no leading zeros right so here if this is the first column if this is like this column here like the first one we don't want it to be zero we don't want to map this s here to zero because if we map it to zero we'll end up with something like this and this is not valid and so we need to check here either that the column is not the first one which means it's not zero or that the column is not is different than the last is different than the first one right so it's not the the last one here because remember we are going this way so we need to check either it's not here or it's uh it's uh it's different than zero and so to do that we are going to say a condition here which is and And letter to digit for letter, either that or the column is not the last one, which means it's different than the length of the word minus one. So this is just for leading zeros, right? Now the else case, which means we don't have an assignment yet for that digit, so we'll try all of them. And so to try all of them, we'll do a for loop for a digit and uh, a letter so this is none if the letter if the digit is not assigned and remember we keep track of that using digit to letter so it's none if it's not assigned so in digit to letter um, so we would need to enumerate it to get both the index is the digit because we start from 0 until 9 and so we'd say enumerate Uh, digit to letter and if C is none that means it's not assigned right if C is none that means the digit is not assigned and here we also need to check that it's not relating zero so we do the same thing and D which means D is different than zero or the column is different than the last one And so, so if the digit is not assigned and this is not a leading zero, then we need to do the backtracking, which is, well, we, we are going to try a digit. If it doesn't work, we are going to backtrack and try another digit. And so that is basically, uh, let me just give myself some space here. That is just doing first the choose a step in backtracking, which means basically, um, please go back, uh, look at, uh, I have a video about backtracking. Take a look at that. if. Um, if you don't know backtracking very well, but this, these are the step. The first step is choosing something, a choice, and then trying it. And if it doesn't work, we backtrack and try something else. So choosing here means that, well, we are going to assign to the letter of the current column for the current word, we are going to assign this digit, which means letter to digit for that letter is going to be this digit right and we are going to mark that this digit is assigned so we are going to say digit to letter so that we don't assign it later in the next step for letter for d is equal to letter and now we are going to do the search for the next step and we check if it's if it gives us um, a true answer that means we find us we found a solution so if search for the current column remember we process column by column so and go, go to the next row with the balance being what well, we do the same thing so we have the sign that we already computed which would be minus one for the last row for the result and one for the other rows multiplied by the digit for the letter so letter to digit so that's just d right 
So multiplied by D. If this is true, that means we found a solution, so we just return true. Otherwise, we backtrack and try something out and try another digit. And so backtracking here is just this and choose a step where we reverse what we did here. And so to do that, well, we need to say that um, let, we need to delete the assignment for letter to digit. So we need to delete letter to digit for, the, for this letter so that it no longer is assigned to D. And we need to mark D that it's not assigned. And so to do that, we'll just say that digit to letter for D is equal to none now, so that it can be reused used in the next step. And if we try all digits and we search here and nothing works, then we need to just return false. And in the like the upper level of the function, so this is the definition of the search function. In the upper level for the is solvable function, we need to start searching with from the first column, the first row, and with balance equal to starting at zero, right? And so that's pretty much the whole code for this. It contains a little bit too much, but um, the main ideas that we are doing here is that we process the edge, the edges, which means last column, last, last row, um, and we search in the, either it's the last column and we need to just check if the balance is equal to zero, or we are at the last row and we make sure that the value at that column of the last row is zero and then we go to the next column for the for the row after that sorry for the first row or um, we are at the last column of the current row so which means we need to go to the next um, next row the same column right so this is basically just handling all the transitions when we are at the last column or the last row. Um, and, and then we go to um, the step where we are in the one of the middle things. And so a letter is either already assigned, so we have to use it because it has to have the same mapping, or it's not assigned yet, and so we try all the possible digits. And that's pretty much what we are doing here. And we backtrack if we don't find a solution. And that's pretty much it. So let's type this uh, up uh, in a more clear way and see if it passes the test cases. Um, OK, so I just typed the exact code that we just saw in the overview, which is <coughs> we need to have this solvable function. And we need to define our maps. And this is just making words contains all the row, including the result, all the rows, including the result. And then we start out with searching from the first row, first column, and balance equals to zero. We define our search function here. And we do the cases that we mentioned, which is either we are, at the, we, we are done and we check if the balance equals to zero, we are at the last row, we check if the current column's result is zero, Modulo 10, of course, is zero. We can have a carry. And we search in the next column for the first row to start processing the next column. And we pass the carry over. Or we are here at the last column of a current word, not necessarily the last word. Then we need to go to the same column, but go to the next word so that we can add it to the balance. Um, <clears throat> and then we are at the last letter, and then we get the letter, the current letter from the current word using this here. We get the sign, which is if it's the last row, then it's the result, so we need to subtract, otherwise it's one. And then we here we do the two cases, either there is already assi an assignment for that letter, so we use this right away, or there isn't an assignment, so we try all the remaining digits. So if there is an assignment here, uh, we make sure that it, this is not a leading um, zero digits, and we search for the next row, the same column, and we add to the balance the current value that we just assigned, that we just used in the, that we just find in the, in the current row. Otherwise, we try an assignment for a digit from among one of the remaining digits. We make sure there's, it's not a leading zero again. And we choose by doing this processing here, basically assigning um, a letter to a digit and assigning a digit to a letter. 
this here we used to know that a, that a digit is assigned or not, and this here we used to know the value that we assigned for, to a letter. And then we search in the next row, in the current column, of course. We add to the balance in the same way we did here. And we end choose, which means basically we backtrack from the choice that we made here. And if trying all of this didn't give us any um, solution, that means there is no solution, so we return false. And that's pretty much all there is to uh, this solution. So let's run the code and submit. <coughs> Uh, okay, looks good. Let's submit. Okay, so this passes the test cases. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, it just contains lots of details, but otherwise it's just a backtracking problem. Um, if you if you spend some time with it, um, I hope it will be easy to understand. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching and see you next.